So here is a, a diagram, obviously. Now, I don't want to explain it too much because you need to interpret the information in the diagram to be successful in mathematics. But we are told that uh, D is equal to 8. You can see this is D right here. And we're looking for the length of X, and that would be uh, this right there. So again, I'm not going to explain the diagram because I want you to fully interpret yourself. And if you can do this, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then we're going to be talking about some really important stuff that all of you out there that are studying uh, geometry or you know mathematics at the algebra one level and beyond need to know. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's talk about this diagram here. And uh, you can see we have basically a square next to a triangle. But, you know, I'm calling this a square, but how can we define this as a square? Well, right here, we do have, this is a, uh, a right angle. This is a right angle here. This is 90 degrees. Now, I need to add in something else to uh, absolutely describe this as a square because some of you might be saying, well, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, couldn't this be a rectangle, okay? In fact, it could be a rectangle as well, okay? So in other words, if I went out like so, uh, this could be a right angle, this could be a right angle, and I could have a diagonal like this. So how can I make this explicit in terms of this being a square, okay? How can I do that? Well, uh, the easiest way to do that is just to show that each of these sides here are congruent, okay? So uh, we have um, a, a quadrilateral, right, a four-sided uh, polygon. They're congruent, and these are right triangles. So this would be a square. Now, if you assumed it was a square because it looks like a square, uh, you know, you're not technically supposed to do that in a math problem. OK, uh, we can't really just assume, like, yeah, it looks like a square. Let's just call it a square because there's different properties um, kind of going on here. But uh, really what I should have done is made this a little bit more uh, explicit. OK, and this is something uh, a little takeaway here that when you're taking uh, any kind of standardized test, maybe like the SAT, ACT, GED, uh, some of the questions will try to trick you by making a figure look like something but technically, if um, you just can't assume that that figure is what it is unless, you know, um, it has all the information on the diagram. All right. So, again, here, this is probably the easiest way to show that this is a square. OK, not to belabor that point, but that is a critical point. So here, this is a square. And next to it, we have a what? Well, we have a triangle, but this is a special right triangle. So right indicates what? Well, we're dealing with 90 degrees. So this is the notation right here that this is 90 degrees. Of course, this is 90 degrees right here. This is 90 degrees right here. Again, a rectangle, you could have a 90 degrees here, a 90 degrees there, okay? To have, uh, you know, a rectangle, you know, basically would have the same notation, but the opposite sides would not be congruent. Well, they would be congruent. They would look like this, but if I put a little, um, one little mark like this, one little mark like this, one little mark like this, and one little mark like this, um, indicating that all sides are congruent. Okay, in a rectangle, it's just opposite sides. Okay, so here we have a special right triangle, and we have 30 here, we have 90 here, so the sum of the angles in a triangle is what? Well, hopefully you said 180 degrees, so this angle right here would be 60 degrees. So we have a 30 60, 90 special right triangle. Okay, so let's kind of erase all this right here. And we're just kind of sizing up the information in the problem, right? So we have a square, we have a special right triangle, and we are given this diagonal, and we're looking for this length here, uh, the hypotenuse of this special right triangle. So how can we proceed? Well, let's go ahead and start with the given information. We know that D is equal to, we were told that D was equal to 8. So we're going to have to start with uh, working on our square uh, to give us what we need to figure out this part of the triangle. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, a square. 
Now, a square, right, all, it's a, basically a quadrilateral where all sides are equal and the corners, the angles here are uh, 90 degrees, right? Now, one thing that uh, you need to know is that when you have a diagonal, okay, this line right here in a square, the angle formed is 45 degrees. So this would be also 45 degrees. You've got 45 and 45 is 90 plus this 90 right there is 180. Now, um, you don't have to know that this is 45 degrees. Uh, of course, you do want to know that, but it's not necessarily important in terms of uh, what we need to do to figure out the length, the side of this square, okay? Because the given information says that D is equal to eight, right? And we're talking about the diagonal here, right? So this is eight. What we're gonna wanna do is find the side of this square. So how can we find the side of this square? Well, because the sides are the same, you could say, well, can I just use the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, indeed you can because uh, the sides are the same, right? So this would be S squared plus S squared is equal to C squared, which would be the diagonal. But really, that's like, you know, uh, doing a lot of um, extra work because what you want to do is remember this little shortcut here, okay, or this basic principle of squares. And so here you have all the sides being equal. The diagonal will be, um, the length of diagonal is going to be the side times the square root of two. Okay, so that's what you want to remember. So you have the side times the square root of two and the angle down here and over here is 45 degrees. Okay, so um, here we know that the diagonal is the side times the square root of two and we know that the diagonal is eight. Okay, we're given that D is equal to eight. So what we're going to do is just set up an equation and solve for the side. So we're going to set this equal to this. So the side times the square root of two is equal to eight, right? So there's a nice, lovely equation, and we're gonna go ahead and solve for S. Now at this point, uh, you know, this is a geometry problem, and when you do geometry, you sh should have already completed algebra one successfully, right? So if you're struggling with how to um, solve a basic algebra equation or how to deal with square roots and radicals, then you need to go back and review your algebra. Again, if you need help with any of this stuff, check out either my Algebra 1 course, my Geometry course, or all, you know, I have uh, many, many videos on all these topics on my YouTube channel as well. But let's go ahead and solve for S by dividing both sides of the equation by the square root of two. So here we have eight over the square root of two. Well, we can't leave our answer that way, right? We have a radical in the denominator, so we have to rationalize it by multiplying both the numer uh, denominator and numerator by the square root of two. This is called rationalizing the denominator. So the square root of two times the square root of two is going to be what? That's the square root of four, which of course is two. Okay, then we here we have eight square root of two. So this expression, you have eight square root of two over two. I could take that two and divide it into eight. So I'm left with four square root of two. Again, if this is kind of confusing, if you're looking at this, you're like, ah, oh, boy, I don't even understand that. Then you need to review your algebra one skills. Remember, math builds upon itself, but don't get discouraged. You know, just make your, you make yourself a little kind of shopping list. I'm like, okay, I need to pick up this skill, this skill, just like you go into the store. You know, I need some potato chips, some, um, you know, Pepsi. I need some uh, bread, you know, whatever the case is. Here, you're like, oh, I need some algebra skills and this, this, and this, and this. All this stuff you can uh, learn. All right. Okay, so we have four square root of two. That is what? That's the side. So the side of our square here in our diagram is four square root of uh, two. All right, so let's go back to our original diagram here. And so we had the di uh, this diagonal being equal to eight. So we use that information. Again, these this here is a square to figure out this side and this triangle uh, is the base of this triangle is the same as the side of the square, which of course is four square root of two. And this is gonna be enough information for us to figure out what X is equal to. Now, uh, some of you might be saying, well, can I just use you know, some basic trigonometry if you know trigonometry? I'm talking about like sine, cosine, and uh, tangent because we have an angle here. Yes, you could, but again, 
this would require typically you know your calculator right so let's suppose you um, this was a question without the aid of your calculator your, your teacher wants to see that you understand uh, special right triangles 30 60 90 45 45 90 right triangles so we don't need this stuff right here for this particular problem because this is a special angle all right so let's talk uh, take a look at this uh, special right triangle so here's 30, here's 60. Now, anytime you're dealing with a special right triangle, obviously 30 degrees is a smaller angle than 60 degrees. So, you know, you might see it something like this. If I um, said this is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle, where would you label the angles? Okay, well, this angle is bigger, right, than this angle. So this would be our 60, this would be our 30, and obviously this would be are 90 okay so you got to be you know um, aware of where the 30 and the 60 and the 90 are okay so here's our 30 degree angle that's given so this is going to be our 60 and then here this is our, our 90 degrees right so we were given this and we do know this length now okay but we're not going to talk about how to solve for this and for just uh, uh, just in this one second what I want to do is just review what you need to understand about a 30, 60, and 90 uh, special right triangle. Okay, the shortest side would be this base right here. Uh, the hypotenuse, okay, let's call this X length, right? Whatever it is, the hypotenuse is uh, going to be just twice the smallest side, okay? So when you have a 30, 60, 90, whatever the smallest side is, you double that, there you, that is your hypotenuse. And to find that middle side, you're just going to take that smallest side and multiply it by the square root of three. All right, so this is stuff that you want to commit to your memory. And now we have everything we need to know in order to solve this problem. Okay, so let's kind of go up here to this diagram and review that we know that uh, four square root of two is the side of this square right here, but it's also the base, the smallest side of this uh, 30 uh, 60, 90 special right triangle. So this right here is also four square root of two. So let's go down here and kind of label like and uh, uh, with this particular triangle, um, kind of break this away so we don't have so much going on. So this base of this 30, 60, 90 special right triangle is four square root of two. So the question is, what is X, right? We're looking for this uh, part. Remember, that was the question what's x and that happens to be the hypotenuse of this triangle okay so i have the base so here this is x uh, the hypotenuse is just going to be twice the smallest side so that would be twice for uh four times the square root of two so two uh times the smallest side that's pretty easy so that's two times four square root of two which will be eight square root of two okay so um you know we kind of covered a lot of different things here really really important stuff not only in geometry, but in trigonometry as well, right? This all relates to like the Pythagorean theorem, uh, of course, to solve uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem problems, a squared plus b squared uh, is equal to c squared. Again, this only applies for uh, uh, right triangles. You need to be uh, up to speed with your algebra, okay? So to be successful in geometry, you have to be successful in algebra, and all this stuff kind of carries forward when you study trigonometry. Remember, math builds upon itself. So if you're really looking to be successful in mathematics, you know, you have to be consistent and you just you have to have the right um, attitude, right? In other words, we, you don't kind of learn in a vacuum, like, all right, I'm going to study this, take my test, and then forget that, and move on to the next chapter, study that, and once I take my test, I'll just totally forget that, because you're not going to be able to do well in these future chapters if you forget all the other stuff that you're learning, okay? There's only one approach to really being successful in math, and that is to build your skills cumulatively, okay? You're going to need what you're currently working on, you're going to need all this previous skills that you learned, right? So if you need help with this stuff, this is what, you know, um, you know, this is why I make these videos, right? To help you out. And hopefully you like my teaching styles. Uh, what I try to do is try to demystify a lot of this stuff. But if it's, you know, if it's not me that you can learn from, find someone, find something to understand how to do these uh, various types of math problems, all right? Because this is very typical kind of stuff. But uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like 
and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.